cricket superstar, playboy, politician. Imran Khan has been called many things, but now he's earned a new title, Prime Minister. Imran Khan was officially declared the winner of Pakistan's highly contested July 2018 election, despite opposition parties' persistent demands for a recount. But how did this former sports star end up securing the highest political position in a country of almost 200 million people? I'm Alex, this is Now This World, and in light of Imran Khan's recent political triumph, we're taking a look at his rise to power. Let's rewind to March 1992. Khan, then captain of the Pakistan national cricket team, led his team to an unprecedented victory for the country. It was Pakistan's first and only World Cup win to date, and a moment of extreme pride for its citizens. Khan, who was already a celebrated cricketer throughout the 70s and 80s, saw his celebrity status skyrocket even further. Beloved both at home and in the West, he had an active and public social and love life. His marriage to a British heiress in 1995 made international news. Media outlets hailed him a playboy and even sex symbol, but he endeavored to shed that image for that of a more conservative and pious figure. Some experts suggested this came as part of his desire to be taken more seriously in the political arena down the line. But first, he made headlines as a philanthropist, fundraising millions of dollars to open a cancer hospital for low-income patients in honor of his late mother in December 1994. It was around this time, a few years after the World Cup victory, that speculation about Khan's leadership potential started popping up, and it was rumored he was setting his sights on a political career. If I felt that by going into politics I would be able to help my country, I certainly would. But the fact is that in Pakistan, politics is completely corrupt. Soon he would outline what would become his core issue for 22 years, ridding Pakistani politics of corruption. And in 1996, he made it official, founding the Pakistan tehreek e insaf or PTI party. Also referred to as the Movement for Justice, the party was branded as an anti-corruption, socio-political movement aiming to create a, quote, self-reliant, modern Islamic republic. But for almost two decades, Khan's party saw few victories. He did not become an instant political star, and I think the reason for that is that he was unwilling to go the route that uh, most politicians uh, in Pakistan do, and that's to sort of try to draw on the most powerful people in the country, like the army and other powerful players, and have them help him. In their first general election contest in 1997, the PTI didn't win a single parliamentary seat. The 2002 election was also a relative failure, with Khan winning just one seat. These defeats earned him a nickname among his critics, Imran Khan. But he kept pushing. In 2007, he even took his anti-corruption convictions so far as to lead a student protest over the authoritarian crackdown by then-military ruler and president General Pervez Musharraf, for which he was arrested. In jail, he went on a hunger strike as a further act of protest. The only way you fight extremism and radicalization is having a genuine democratic system. This is not the way by using your army. His PTI party would boycott the 08 elections over the lack of an independent judiciary. And Khan's predisposition to blaze his own trail continued to lead him to take some pretty controversial stances. Some critics accused him of failing to firmly crack down on violent extremist groups, even dubbing him with the nickname Taliban Khan. Though Khan has largely condemned violent terrorist attacks, critics argue that he's at times acted as an apologist for groups like the Taliban, blaming the group's presence in Pakistan on U.S. intervention in Afghanistan and urging negotiations with them. If there was a chance of peace talks, we should have grabbed it. Critics also say he's failed to adequately support Pakistan's persecuted religious minorities by strongly defending the country's blasphemy laws. These laws, the foundation of which were first introduced under British colonial rule, criminalized derogatory remarks against the interpretation of Islam sanctioned by the government. Muslim minority groups in Pakistan, like Ahmadis and Shias, as well as Hindu and Christian Pakistanis, have been disproportionately persecuted under these laws. Since the 90s, dozens of people have been murdered after being accused of blasphemy and others sit on death row over the legal provisions. The PTI has pushed back on this criticism, saying Khan has, quote, repeatedly educated the masses on tolerance for minorities in Islam. He did stand up for religious minorities in certain instances, including in 2013, when a Christian colony was gutted by a mob over alleged blasphemy. But Khan has said these blasphemy laws are not to blame for deaths, 
and reiterated his strong support for them just weeks before the latest election. Despite his ongoing contentions, 2013 ended up being his party's most successful year up to that point. The PTI won 27 seats. Still not a major victory, but a step in the right direction for the party. Of course, as he spent more time in the political spotlight, controversies continued. As recently as 2017 and 2018, sexual harassment allegations emerged against him, which Khan has denied or ignored altogether. And Khan continued to pick himself up and campaign. Sports uh, teaches you these, you know, that life is not in a straight line, ups and downs. You take your knock, then each time you get, pick yourself up from the mat, and then you are, you, you are successful. He vowed to lift millions of people out of poverty, create jobs, and to improve access to education and health care. He also doubled down on calls to root out corruption and a promise to challenge the status quo. They really see him as the guy that could tackle corruption just because he's not one of them, so to speak. He doesn't come from the corrupt political class. He's not the product of a family dynasty. He doesn't come from one of the two major political parties. This is the most important election in Pakistan. Because the first time I got the that two parties that have taken the past 30 years this is the opportunity to protect the status quo, or the those parties that were the Experts say his anti-corruption, anti-elitism, anti-poverty campaigning really resonated with young, middle-class urban voters. As of late 2017, people under the age of 35 accounted for almost half of the country's registered voters. And in July 2018, the Pakistan tehreek e insaf party won 115 out of 270 available seats. He had finally achieved a goal that was more than two decades in the works. There was mass celebration in the streets. और ये उनके उस मकफ की जीत है जो उन्होंने 22 साल से इस आवाम में प्रमोट किया और आवाम आज उनको बड़े ज़्यादा वोटों के से नवाज रही है। But later, it would be followed by protest, amid speculation that the powerful military may have played a heavy hand in getting Khan elected, including potentially playing a role in the 2017 ousting of then Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. The expert we spoke to says Khan's relationship with the military will be one of the single most important determining factors in how successful his government will be. Khan may have a tough road ahead. He's also inheriting a looming debt and currency crisis and strained relations with the US, Afghanistan, and India. Addressing those issues, coupled with his long-held promise to curb corruption, make for one tall order. So can he get it done? Certainly his supporters have high hopes. Joe, I'd say do you think Imran Khan is more likely to try to sidestep or work with the military to build his new Pakistan? And if you're from Pakistan, we want to know. What does this victory mean for you? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching Now This World.